Right, we'll start anyway. Um, I've, hopefully, I'm recording it as well, so I'll show this over on the um, YouTube channel and like all the other like my new Facebook group and stuff like that. Um, and I'll show you links to your books. So hopefully, people can check it out for you. Um, okay, can, can you hear me okay? Yeah, uh, I'll switch your volume up a little bit. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I'm on the wrong set of speakers, but I don't know quite how to quickly fix that. Yes, me, uh, um, this is actually the first interview I've ever done, so I've been trying to figure out what to do and how to go about <laughs> it. <and that. laughs> uh, so thanks very no, much I've, for reaching out to me. Um, let me, uh, I thought I'd just see if I could, oh, I'm not, I'm not there. Here, we, Okay, I'm not on settings. I don't know where, what's going on here. Oh, here we are. No. I just thought I'd see if I get on this other set of speakers. Um, Sounds uh, fine to me as well. Okay. Well, then if... Uh, okay, I'm not seeing... For some reason, I'm not getting the... Uh, so not the window I'm getting isn't telling isn't what I wanted to get. It's kind of a different deal. So I don't know what's going on. Okay, if you can hear me, let's go. Okay. Yeah, yeah, great. Um, so um, needles. Um, let's talk about that. Yeah. Um, what what made you um, write it as a book? Um, I know a little bit, you know, but like people who are watching, um, like explain to them, like where did they come from. Well, it's, it's kind of a funny, funny situation. Uh, when I was about 14 years old, uh, a business associate of my dad, in order to thank him, delivered a Christmas tree to our house. And the problem was we already had a Christmas tree, all decorated and everything. And so that little tree was sitting outside, and we tried to find somebody to take it, and we could not find anybody to take the tree. So... It sat out there all of Christmas, and of course it, it died. And so we, I, I, for 50 years, I have just had this little tree in my mind. I, I, I always felt sorry for the thing. I felt sorry for it then. I still feel sorry for it. So I, I always thought I'd write a little story about a Christmas tree that nobody wanted, but that had a happier ending. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I did, and that was the genesis. That was the the reason I sat down and wrote a story. Yeah. This, this story, yeah, based yeah. on a on a real world experience. Yeah, definitely, it's a great story as well, and I love the illustrations as well that go with it. And um, it's got like a li yeah. little hidden message as well, hasn't it? Like where he's um, in the tree lot and he wants all he wants to be picked, but all the other trees don't want to stand near him and that. Yeah, it's it, you know it's it's. It's about a kind of a scraggly little tree, and he endures those taunts and criticisms and and setbacks to, you know, eventually realize his goal of becoming a beautiful Christmas tree. And it's really a story of hopes, dreams, desires, uh, determination, and and never giving up. Uh, and also, I think it's it offers the observation that what others think is beautiful may not really matter. Yeah, um, I think the ultimate. The ultimate lesson from the book is that we all have to persevere through the adversities of life. And it's interesting because when I wrote the book, or when I started writing the book, that that concept was not preconceived when I started writing. Uh, it evolved throughout the story to where it was kind of staring at me in the face, and I took advantage of it. Uh, yeah. And you know, just and and just the fact that. I think it's a great lesson for little kids. You know, don't give up. Keep trying. Keep going. Yeah, that's hundred percent. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's, it's, like I said, it is a great read. Um, do you plan on to write any more stories, or is that one and only? I would like to write more <laughs> more children's books. I I I have enjoyed the experience. Um, uh, I I a lot of people want me to make needles a series. Yeah, I'm I'm, try, I'm I'm trying to figure out what you do with a Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I've got a I've got a couple of ideas in mind that I've been throwing around and and everybody seems to think, hey, that would be really great. Yeah. So I, I you know I have to see what happens. Yeah, interesting. I'd like to hear what you uh, 
I'll keep following you anyway. So see if you any more come out and that. Um, so um, how did you go about um, uh, get, getting your book out there? Did you contact some like publishers and that, or did you go through like some people do, write books on Amazon? Katie, you know, it was very, it was very interesting because uh, I I was really sort of scratching my head. You know, after I wrote the story, it was like, well, now what do I do? And uh, I had a, a good friend and business associate that I had done business with uh, for several years. And it turned out he was the ex general manager of the Los Angeles Dodgers for 25 years. Very kind of a famous guy. Yeah. And uh, he wrote a book about his time with the Dodgers. And I, and I saw it and I got a copy and I, I called him up and I said, where'd you get this published? And he told me and I told him about my, my story. And he said, hey, I'll make a call. We'll get you right in. So I ended up, that's how I ended up at Mascot Books, uh, which is now Amplify Publishing. And uh, from there, um, you know, I got to be honest with you, Jay. I mean, writing the book wasn't that difficult. The hardest part was getting an illustrator. Yeah. Oh, well, I bet. Yeah. I, I, went through, I went through about 20, 25 illustrators uh, where they all did, you know, little drawings for me and you know my concept at the beginning was that i i didn't want a cartoonish character i i I wanted sort of a more elegant book um with really nice drawings and lots of color and a look and some substance there and i wanted a real tree and so i kept telling all these illustrators draw me a tree that that shows emotion when it's happy the branches are up when it's sad it's drooping something like that and boy, a lot of them had trouble. And then I hit on Sydney Kruger and yeah. she got it. She, she figured it out. And I really liked her drawings. Yeah. I really like it. And like, you, you can feel it. You can, like you said, the emotions. And when I was reading it and I was looking at the illustrations as well, I was like, yeah, you can, you can like, hard to say the words, but I, I could, I could like picture that little scraggly tree. Um, yeah. what, you, what you had as a, a child, like, and, uh, he definitely, he definitely brings it to life in this book with the with the, those illustrations. I think you know, the cartoony ones would have like made it more. Uh, how do you say, it? like more kiddie kind of thing? Like where they, they don't really feel it. It's just more of a fun story, or kind of thing. It it would have worked, but it would have been a different feel. I think. Yeah, that, and yeah. and I think getting the the ultimate message through that I that I ended up with might have been a little harder with a cartoonish character, but it might have worked. But I just wanted something a little nicer. Yeah, I guess it it, it kind of goes back to to growing up and you're reading books like, you know, The Night Before Christmas, you know, and the yeah. illustrations were always so great, you know, in, yeah, in those books. books. And yeah. I just thought, I just want to be sort of in that realm. Definitely, yeah. And you are. You, so your first book as well, it's, it's brilliant. Well, thank you. So, um, so, some of the questions I sent you then, um, do you want to answer any of them? Or Yeah. Um, uh, you asked, uh, I've, we've already talked about the inspiration behind the book, you know, how yeah. that happened. Uh, I was very surprised that I that I won multiple awards on this thing. I, I, uh, I, I didn't really know that that was a thing, so to speak. I just remember growing up seeing books that I read that had little medallions on them and and uh, that they were, you know, special books or something. Then all of a sudden, every time uh, my, my marketing team would send this book out somewhere, it would come back with the top award. And I was like, wow, yeah. you know, I Thank guess you. I have a pretty good story. And, and uh, that was really neat. I was very, uh, very kind of humbled by that. Um, uh, you know, so, you know, that's, that's been sort of the, sort of an icing on the cake, I guess you might say. Um, you know, you asked if illustrations play a crucial role in children's books. I think they really do. And that was one reason I wanted a really good illustrator. You know, you want, you want someone to want to read the book and maybe read it more than once and really enjoy opening at it and not only reading it, but looking at the pictures. And especially if you're really, if it's a really young child and say a parent's reading the book to them, you know, the, the children, child is listening, but B 
being able to look at the pictures and 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 see what's happening through the pictures while you're hearing it, I think is very important. Yeah. So I, I think illustrations are extremely important in a in a in a in a children's book, especially a Christmas book, you know, with lots of yeah. colors and things like that. Yeah. But um uh, you know, you, you ask, you know, if there is, uh, 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 if I have any advice for, for other writers um, in creating a holiday themed children's book, it's, you gotta have, you, you, I, I guess, um, uh, you, you want to start out and have a good story, you know, uh, or at least a, a basis for a story. As I told you earlier, the most surprising thing about this was, is that how the story came together, it just flowed and sort of happened. It wasn't all preconceived. I didn't have the whole thing set up in my mind. As I was writing it, I sort of started to realize, wow, this is this is kind of going. And uh, I think it's important to have a character the reader can identify with. Um, uh, I think the story needs to flow and not be disjointed. Um, and I think it's... Uh, important to leave the reader with something they can hold on to like a lesson or something that truly gives the story meaning which which i was able to do here i think yeah i agree I do. um you're asking can you share any memorable reactions or feedback you've received uh yeah it's pretty funny uh I've, I've gotten a reaction from people whose children have read the book and the children literally have memorized the book. It's really kind of funny. And they're yeah. able to regurgitate the whole story uh, without looking at the book. And uh, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting. Um, yeah. you, you know, that's, it's been something that the children have wanted to read over and over. And, 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 and the interesting thing was some of these children seem to have really identified with, with needles in certain ways yeah definitely do you um, have you read your book out anywhere like taking it to any uh, bookstores or anything like that yes. yeah yeah um i was at uh uh i've taken it around to various bookstores uh mostly in the area but uh you know we live in newport beach so we have some very nice stores here in southern california and i actually went and did a signing at a at a uh at a store uh, two weekends ago, and uh, man, uh, I mean, I sat there for about four hours. I sold fifty books, and people were lined up. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of weird. They didn't know I was going to be there. It was the open yeah. house for this store for all their Christmas decorations, and people were like, "Wow!" And I've been to a couple of Barnes and Nobles, and I've got a couple more to go to. And uh, it's kind of interesting because people are, it, it, what I find very interesting is people will stop and look and they'll say, oh, gee, did you write a book? And I go, yeah. And then they want to talk. They, they want to find out about it. Yes. Um, I, I walked into another store holding about a dozen books that I was going to give to them. And before I could even talk to the owner of the store, I had two people come up to me and buy books. <laughs> <laughs> so the owner looked at me and said, wow. You want to bring you want to bring more? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <That's good. laughs> yeah. So yeah, we've been doing we've been doing some stores. Uh, uh, it it has been an it, uh, it it reached whatever whatever it takes. It reached Amazon bestseller, and uh, but so I but I think it's going to be about a three or four year process of really marketing the book because it's seasonal. Yeah. That's great though. Um, I've seen on Amazon you've got the Kindle version on the hardback. And yeah. Do you plan on doing like an audio or an audio? Do I do what? I'm sorry. I, excuse I'm sorry. Do you plan on doing the audio version so like um, so that people could listen to it? Wow. You know, nobody's asked me about that. Um, uh, I would do it. I didn't I didn't know if that's something I should do. I should ask uh, I should ask my team if that's something we need to do. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't know, I don't know about that, but that's that's probably something I ought to do, frankly. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, but um, I just, I just heard other people do like audio versions of the book, and right. I just think yours you know, could be good because kids like listening to stories as well, and um, could be with well. Um, when you when you do an audio, do you still see the pictures? Um, I think they can on some devices. I think they can read it. Okay. 
Uh, like, look at the text and read it along as you uh, as the audio is right. like, playing as well. Okay. But, yeah. What do you prefer? Do you prefer the Kindle version or the hardback? Do you, do you prefer like a physical version of the book? Well, I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I guess I'm a tactile person. I kind of prefer holding a book. You know, yeah. I'm kind of like that with with a newspaper. You know, I I get the Wall Street Journal, so I like to read it. I like to hold the newspaper. Yeah. You know, I and not look at it on my phone. I, and I'm getting to the point where I can't read my phone. So oh, I know a lot. You know, it's. <laughs> Yeah, so it's. Uh, I guess. I guess I'm pretty old school on that. My kids, you know, they like to read it off their phone. Okay, whatever. So, yeah, <laughs> that's the same as my kids. They they read on the phone, but I prefer the physical. Yeah. No, I agree. But also, I think the book affords you the ability to really look at the pictures. Yeah, oh, yeah. Kind of go, go back and forth, and anyway, you yeah. know, I think little kids like to hold that. I think they like to be able to hold it, and you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So, if um, apart from Amazon, where else can people find your book if they want to buy it? If they want to buy it online, yeah. Besides Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Yeah, uh, they can also find it on uh, uh, Mascot Books uh, at. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what the. Uh, uh, um, I'm looking for the for the website and I'm not seeing it. Uh, but on Mascot Books online, they can find it. They can also find it on my website, which is uh, needlesthechristmastree.com. And you can buy it directly on the website as well. Right. And well, I'll, when Sorry. When I upload these to um, my YouTube and all that, I'll put all your details and all your like links to your websites and other places okay. as well. Um, just for anyone who's watching it now, if they want to find it, I'll put the links in the description. Right. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah, no problem. Perfect. But yeah, um, is there any more questions on this? I don't think there is. Is there? No, I think that's. Uh, I think that's pretty good. I think we've covered about just about everything there is to cover on this. Yeah, definitely. Uh, unless um, you have any more questions. No, um, you've answered them. Um, apart from like okay. where they can find the book and um, right, like general idea. Yeah. Um, thanks very much for um, coming on and being my first ever interview. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I really enjoyed your book, by the way. I'm not well, just thank you that, very much. But, yeah, I'm not just saying that. I actually did. I love Christmas. Um, as, you, as my, my website, it's all about Christmas, right. my podcast and all that, it's all Christmas. So um, it was great to read like someone's book. Um, and it's Christmas as well, so perfect. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. Very much. So no problem. Uh, so, yeah, uh, so we leave it there then, and I will get okay. it up. I'll get it uploaded. I'll put on, If you want to send me links over in, in like on the email, I will add them all into the descriptions and that, and um, I'll let you know when it's going live as well. And if I get any feedback, um, people wanting to okay. know any more questions, I'll give you. Yeah, if that's all right with you. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, brilliant. Okay. Thanks very much. Thanks a lot. Well, it was great meeting you. I appreciate yeah, it. Good. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks a lot, and all the best. Yeah. Okay. Take care. Thanks a lot. See you later. Bye. -bye. Bye.